Hello, let's try pips again today. I'm going to once again go through each of the three levels, easy, medium, and hard. Probably, <laughs> I probably won't do this game forever, but uh, even before I stop doing it for good, I'll probably switch to hard. We'll see. If you particularly enjoy me doing it, let me know. Maybe I'll keep going. Anyway, for now, let's start with easy. We'll see how we go with this new domino based New York Times game. Right. So we need two areas that add up to seven and one that adds up to nine. Nine will need to be five and four. That's the only way to hit that. So we might as well put that in. And then, oh, well, actually it'll need to be two, right? So we need a two, this two and four, and then we'll need a five that goes in here. We only have one five. So that must be this. Uh, and then, well, now, now it's kind of going to solve itself because we now have a four in the seven. We need a three for that. Um, and we need a two up here. So the two goes here. It's the only possibility remaining. Three needs a four. And then we've solved both sevens. There we go. All right, we'll play another difficulty. Let's try medium. Oh, n not equal. Right, interesting. I don't think I've seen this one before. So in this region, presumably this means none of the three pips can be equivalent to one another. Um, here we've got a five. Oh, and here we've got a five out of these five. Interesting. Okay. So this needs a five. How many fives do we have? We have three candidates for this. The six, obviously. The five and six can't go in because that'll break that five immediately. Um, interesting. What, how do we start this? Let's see. Do I just start? I, I'm thinking the zero is probably going to need to actually... Yeah, the zero does need to go on the five because we don't have five uh, singles, which would be the only way we could fill this five region if we didn't, you know, if we if we didn't have a zero. So the zero does need to go in the five. That's that's certain. So that's something at least. And we know that uh, no fives or sixes can go in the five. Um, so we'll want the two. Yeah, we'll need the two empty ones to go in the five. We'll probably want... No, actually, yes. Hold on, I'm thinking about the... I think this... Um, trying to decide if the one goes here or in the vertical, and I think it needs to go here, because if we don't put it there, I think we'll end up with two fives in the not equal. So now we have three in the five region. We only have room for two more. So that'll go there. And now the three, the five, and the six will be not equal to one another. And there we go. That was the medium. Okay. So this this was, I think this was possibly more difficult than any of the three from yesterday, at least for me just now. I mean, that, that's obviously could have been much easier for, for other folks. But for me, I found this one a bit trickier. It required a bit more forward thinking, I guess. So let's move on to hard and see how this one goes. Right. Okay. This looks like a complex board. So we've got a 10 up there, which we could achieve. So one of the things I think that is worth thinking about generally when, when kicking off this game is at what point do the dominoes cross over the borders versus stay within them? And that's usually it's usually forced based on the overall kind of shape of the grid. So if we just look at this top area and we look at how many sort of full sets of two domino spaces there are, we've got one, two, three, four, right. So if you look at this kind of, I don't really know how to describe it, but the area up at top that includes the 10 and the equals area plus these two extra blank cells, this actually has an odd number of cells, um, which means one of the dominoes is going to need to cross over between that sort of arbitrary section that I've outlined and this kind of four horizontal Tetris piece area. So there will need to be one uh, domino that goes here. That means there will also need to be a vertical domino that goes here on this edge because that's just where that'll end up. Um, I don't know that that necessarily tells us a huge amount about the 10 just now, but it's worth thinking, it's worth keeping in mind because that will then have further effects. It means we'll need one horizontal domino here. Oh, and that's a zero, right? Well, the zero 
there actually that okay that that was useful immediately because we through that deduction we now know there must be a single there must be a domino in the middle of this zero section rather than two dominoes on either end otherwise we won't be able to fully fill this top section and the only domino that could possibly go in the middle of this zero is two blanks and we will also obviously need blanks on either end but that that's something we can definitely put in right now so it was actually worth performing that exercise. We also know, I don't know if it'll be this one, but we need one that goes here, which means, again, there will be a vertical domino in this little sort of peninsula that sticks out over on over in the, uh, the southeast. So it's just worth bearing that in mind as well. This section is a five equals, which means there needs to be one number of which we have at least five in the dominoes. Is it actually five? We've got one, two, three. We do have five instances of five. That might be the only one. One, two, three. No, we've got five ones as well, actually. So it could be, I think the only candidates for the for the five large equals section are either a, a one pip or a five pip. I think those are our only options. Yeah. Okay. And then a three singles region of three obviously needs a three. And it looks like we only have one of those. So that will need to go in. And actually, we know which way it goes for the reason that we've just stated, which is that we can't orient it horizontally, because if we did, we'd have a zero going into the equals, and we don't have enough zeros to um, to manage that. So it must go vertically. Um, that's, that means that in this four region, the only way to fill it is with a four. Do we have? We do have more than one four. Um, and actually, that solves the equals, because our choices with fours would be to put a four in the equals, but we've already determined we don't have enough fours uh, to make five equivalents. So it'll have to be this one. And now we know we need to construct this equal segment entirely out of ones. We see there must be a domino that goes here, so it'll have to have two ones in it. And uh, now we need a one and a zero to bridge this gap to keep our zero honest. And then we need one more one. There's only a single possibility there. So the six goes in this irrelevant segment. And now we finish off the zero segment with our only remaining uh, zero domino half. And uh, now we can see that the equal segment, I guess it already was sort of established here, but the equal segment needs um, all fives, which was our other possibility. The ones and the fives were the two possibilities for the five large Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yes. Okay, so we've got one domino here. That'll have a five on the top. Um, and then I guess we'll have a double five that goes either here or in the vertical position there. Not sure which yet. Um, how many fives do we have remaining? One, two, three, four. Uh, that means all four of our remaining fives will be needed to fill the sequels, which means the 10 cannot be filled with two fives. It'll have to be a six and a four. So I th yeah, we no longer have the possibility to have six and four. I guess we never did have that in a single domino, which means we'll have to put a four in one of them, which can only now fit here, and a six in the other, which can only fit here, uh, which means the double five can only fit here. And finally, the five and the two go here. Boy, that took me a while, didn't it? Yeah, look at that. More than five minutes. Wow. Okay, well, there we go. That was probably the trickiest pips we've solved yet, I would say. And um, it, it's funny because I'm sort of figuring out how to solve these as I'm doing it, because obviously this is a, this is a brand new puzzle. So, um, you know, there are certain concepts I'm encountering that uh, I'm going, I'm having to kind of come up with strategies. I'm sure there are faster ways I could attack this, but it's interesting to sort of talk through my thought process as I go through, and hopefully that's helpful to you as well. Anyway, that was all three uh, difficulty levels of PIPs for August 21st. Hope you enjoyed it. Probably be back with us tomorrow. Bye for now.